the needs for impact attenuation vary according to the free height of fall and the type of equipment if there is a forced movement on the user. The standard does not forbid any specific materials. It establishes any material should be able to absorb the energy of an impact to a certain extent and gives references to achieve minimum safety levels. Each choice for impact attenuation will have different implications on play value and inclusion potential, as well as on layout, inspection and maintenance costs, but also on sustainability, aesthetics and others. There is no such thing as the ideal material, as all have advantages and disadvantages. Let's look at some criteria for risk-benefit assessment on some commonly used materials for impact attenuation. We can choose from natural or synthetic materials and continuous or loose particulate material. For natural loose fill materials, we can have like bark, wood chips, sand or gravel. Apart from the impact attenuation properties, which happen through the deformation and displacement of the material, we should look at play value and potential for inclusion, which are high for loose fill materials due to their affordances in terms of diversity of functions and multisensorial stimulation. Texture, smell of wood, the nice feeling when you step on it, like a little bit fluffy, the padding, or the pliability of gravel and sand that you can dig or that can be molded. Children just love it. Sand and gravel can also encourage interaction and cooperation between children with appropriate equipment. But not all material is suitable. For instance, for gravel, it should not contain dust or any sharp particles. It has to be washed and rounded so that it can properly absorb the energy of the impact. When it comes to accessibility, bark and wood chips are easier to walk on and also for wheels than sand or gravel. But sand and gravel can also be a choice to limit access to some equipment that is not suitable in terms of risk level for less able children and to help keeping the impact areas free from mobile obstacles. It is also more likely to keep adults away from children so that they can play more freely. Grass is another natural material that is considered to be acceptable for impact attenuation for falls up to one meter height, although it can easily wear out with heavy use and lose its properties if not well maintained. It also allows for terrain modeling and some accessibility. It has a high play value and potential for inclusion. Grass is also great in combination with other materials and to contain loose fill materials. When it comes to synthetic materials, the most common solutions are rubber tiles and wet pour or poured in place surfacing. In terms of play value and potential for inclusion, wet pour offer possibilities to include color, terrain modeling, patterns, and it also gives stability to walk and for wheeled equipment. It also allows for greater speed when running around the play area. Although rubber surfaces are great for accessibility issues, this excessively easy access may give rise to other risks due to the creation of affordances for mixed uses like cycling, wheeled play or ball games in impact areas. This can lead to collisions or other conflicting situations with users of play equipment. This leveled and comfortable accessibility to impact areas can also encourage overprotection from parents or supervisors as they may stay too close to children during play. This may even hinder their autonomy and self-confidence. When it comes to maintenance and inspection needs, loose fill materials are easier to inspect as it, as it can be done visually and therefore be cheaper, but at the same time, there is a need for more frequent maintenance for cleaning and refill of the appropriate layer of material up to the level mark on the equipment. Synthetic materials are easier to clean, although they can also lose their impact attenuation properties without proper maintenance or with aging. 
Wet pour surfacing may be an expensive challenge to inspect foundations of equipment. For one post equipment in particular, rubber tiles may make it easier to check stability below ground level. Also for inspection of the impact attenuation properties, testing with specific equipment will be necessary, which can make it more expensive. As you can see, there is no perfect material and you will have to make a thorough risk-benefit assessment before you choose, as through the whole life cycle, your choices will have an impact on operation as well as on play value for children.